What is up here? This is Midnight Zero, and welcome back to Let's Play Zero Escape Virtue's Last Reward Blind. In the last episode, we had quite the encounter with Kay. He chose to betray us twice, and, well, now we're in the timeline where we also chose to betray, after having naively, optimistically <laughs> uh, trusted him the first time around. However, a lot happened, and we're actually exploring some of the unlocked rooms. This is one we haven't been to before. I think it was called Gollum something. <laughs> And I want to thank a commenter, I think it was Byakudan, from the last video who clarified that in the timeline where Quark got the Accelivir, it was actually from the laboratory, not the treatment center, which which makes a difference. So um, I had totally forgotten about that, so thank you. All right, let's start exploring. Huh, what's this room? That looks like a workbench of some sort. Maybe, but what sort of work? Yeah, it's a good question. Well, we're here to find Quark, not look at a workbench. You go check out the far end, alright? Very well. Nothing. He's not here either. Hey, Kay! How's it going over there? Kay! Can you hear me? Kay was bent over with his back to me, peering underneath the thing that looked like a workbench. What the heck? I walked toward him as I spoke. Hey man, what's going on here? Oh, nothing. <laughs> How suspicious of you, Kay. I bent down and saw he was staring at something that appeared to be a safe. It's empty. Yes. Very interesting. So I don't think this is a room that anybody explored at this point in time, right? So how is the safe empty if none of us have explored this room before? Well that's certainly concerning. Was there something in there before? No, it was empty when I found it. Was it? Yes. Then what are you doing staring into an empty safe? I was thinking. Specifically, I was thinking about who opened this safe. Wouldn't that have been the team that went through the green door? I think that was Dio, Fi, and Clover. No, that's unlikely. When we met up with Dio, he told us that he had been in the treatment center. The nameplate on this door says this is the Golem Bay, however. Uh, is there something? Is that an anagram of some sort? Mm, nothing that's coming to mind. So you're saying they didn't go here? I believe that is the case. Yeah, I, I agree. Which, as you can see, is why I was puzzled. Yeah, who gained access to this room and thus... Access the safe earlier. If Dio Fi and Clover did not open this safe, who did? Well, there's no point thinking about it. We should get back. Yes, there was another unlocked door, wasn't there? Yep. Let's get moving then. Interesting, so we don't really get to analyze it much. Uh, we don't really learn a lot about the room. Given there's a safe, I'd imagine it's a puzzle in one of the timelines that we'll have to solve. But now we head over to the treatment center. We're not going to check the other unlocked door? Ah, oh, come on. But it's interesting to note, somebody had been there before, right? And that kind of adds to the already existing problem that people are going places we don't think should be possible. How did that lady end up in an AB room when... Supposedly, there was no way to access it, right? How did somebody access the, the Gollum Alley and the safe when it shouldn't have been accessible? I'm not really sure. So this is the treatment center, huh? This is the room that Dio visited. Don't you think that's kind of strange? Until now, all the chromatic doors have led to a single room each. So why are there two rooms on the other side of the green door? So, An excellent question. Well, we know that they vary based on the timeline, which one is 
opened as you enter the chromatic door, but we can talk to the others later, I guess, and see if they know anything. Kay and I split up and began to look for places where Quark might have hidden, or small holes he might have escaped through. Or closets he might have been stuffed in is more where my mind is at. Interestingly enough, that safe was closed too, wasn't it? Huh? What are these? They must be the treatment pods Dio mentioned. The window is all covered with frost on the inside. I can't see in. Shall we open it? Yeah, might as well. Have at it. Oh, so now we actually get to take a look inside. If the windows are covered with frost, maybe we can't see inside. Was Quark put in one of these? Yep. What? So, Quark ended up in one of the treatment center pods. Why is this pertinent? Well, K, Dio, and Phi... No, it wasn't K, Dio, and Phi. It was Dio, Phi, and who? I know Kay literally just reminded us. Oops, not the flow. Um, I want to look at the log. Who was here? Treatment pod Dio mentioned. This is the room that Dio visited. Dio, Phi, and Clover did not open this safe. Who did? So Quark ended up in here. I remember there was that door that Temyoji, you know, carried Quark through. But then Quark ran from that room because that's when he went missing, and somehow ended up in this treatment center. How could Quark have known about the treatment center? Right? And known that this is potentially something that could be helpful. And in his altered mindset, I'd be surprised if he actively sought out treatment, right? In that, when infected by Radical Six, it seems your, your mindset is incredibly dismal and depressed, and like you'd rather kill yourself. So I don't think Quark would seek out treatment. And so that leads me to think that somebody else put Quark in this pod. The question is, who, right? If K, Clover, and Phi were the only people to be here, well, I mean, it would be very odd if all three of them stayed quiet about Quark, right? So when did Quark get here? Did none of them even see Quark in the treatment center? We don't really know what the escape room is like in this room, so do, is it even necessary to open the pods, right? Uh, so it's possible they were here and Quark was already in here and they just completely missed over, or, you know, glazed over him. Hmm. But if he was before, here before Dio, Phi, and Clover were here, who could have put him in here? Right? We have this open-ended problem of people accessing doors that we don't think should be possible, so... So it's not like it's completely out of the question that other people here could have placed Quark in here, but I just don't know how how that would happen. Let alone how other people in this warehouse, in the Nonary game currently, would know that the treatment center and the treatment pods exist, right? If so, that would seem to imply that other people are experiencing the timeline phenomenon like we are. If it's only Phi and Sigma... That means it's probably Phi who placed Quark here. But if it's not, then that argues for the existence of other people, not just Phi and Sigma, also experiencing the timeline phenomenon, which complicates things greatly, doesn't it? Anyways, what? Quark! No. Oh! Oh, I didn't even realize he doesn't have his bracelet on! What? Oh no. His... his bracelet. It's... oh god. Yeah. Hold on, Sigma. Calm down. Look at his chest. Can you see it moving? What? I quickly pressed a finger to Quark's wrist. It was faint, but his heartbeat was there. He's... he's alive. He's alive! So, my one potential thought right now is, via cryostasis or something, Quark's heartbeat stopped and his bracelet came off. Somebody took that bracelet and then put Quark in here, right? And he was treated, so his, you know, heart came back. It is possible for somebody's pulse to completely stop and then be brought back with something like CPR. In this fictional world of, you know, VLR, 
I wouldn't be surprised if it was possible to have somebody die, their pulse stop, their bracelet come off, and then be put in this treatment pod and essentially come back to life. So, it's not completely out of the realm of, you know, feasibility. What a relief. I'm so glad to know he's safe. The next question though is, where's his bracelet then? Who has it, right? I laughed out loud and grabbed Kane a bear hug, or at least as much of one as I could manage. He patted me on the back and shared what I thought might have been a relieved chuckle. But if he's still alive, why is his bracelet off? Sir Jr. said it would only come off when you died. Perhaps Zero Senior took it off? What? Why? I have no idea. But it's not outside the realm of possibility. Then maybe Zero Senior brought Quark here and put him in this pod thing too. Yeah, I mean, if... We're wait, under the assumption Zero Senior is one of the Nonary Game participants. They would be the only person, morphogenetic stuff aside, who would know about the existence of this treatment center, right? However, it'd be pretty odd, right, for Zero Senior to bring somebody into the Nonary Game, presumably knowing that they're infected with Radical Six, maybe even very intentionally infecting them with Radical Six, but then also secretly treating them. I don't really get that motivation. Anyways, well, even if he did, we don't have any way to know why. This pod is for medical treatment. Perhaps Quark has contracted some sort of illness. He's sick? What has he got? How would I know that? In any event, we should return and let the rest of our companions know that we've found Quark. I imagine Temyoji in particular will be pleased. Yeah, I bet. Do you think you can carry him, or...? No, I believe it would be best to leave Quark here. Yeah, if we're working with the presumption he's sick, you're gonna want to leave him in the treatment pod. As I mentioned, there is a chance he has fallen ill. If so, then removing him from the pod would be dangerous. The treatment he is currently undergoing could be compromised. Oh. I'll close the pod's cover then. Is that alright? Yeah, sure. Wait, um, I just thought of something. Are you sure he's going to be alright? What do you mean? Well, what happens if he wakes up? Can he open that thing on his own? He'll be fine. I noticed the lever inside that can be used to open the cover. Interesting, so that's good to know. Even if, it, I guess you can't be trapped inside such a thing, so long as you're conscious. Oh, rather, so long as no one locks the pod, he should be able to leave whenever he wants. But if someone locks him in, he's screwed? Yes, that is what I said. But you needn't worry. You see, I have not engaged the lock. I am curious though, I don't remember, was it locked when we found it? Now, we should return to the Floor B warehouse. I imagine the others are already there. Right, yeah. Okay, let's go. I'm curious to see how everyone will react. I know I've mentioned it in another timeline, but I, I'd almost be tempted to say, hey, we went to the treatment center and we didn't find Quark anywhere. And just see how people react, because somebody amongst the participants should know where Quark is. You're late. <laughs> You're one to talk. How much earlier did you get back again? I'd be surprised if you searched at all. This is it? Yeah, Clover and Temyoji still aren't back. So, find anything? 
Yeah, we sure did. Yeah? Well, go on, spill it. I explained to them how we'd found Quark in the treatment center. I see. Ah, that precious smile. Well, that's good to hear. Little jerk making us all worried. There is more. And that is... There is still some cause for concern. Just spit it out. Quark may have contracted an illness of some sort. As such, he has been left in the treatment pod. Will he be alright? Yeah, he'll probably... Probably? Do you even... Whatever, at least we found him. Pretty lucky he's alive, too. What do you mean by that? I mean what I said, genius. The, the Japanese more there is like... Is more specifically, it's good that he wasn't killed is what I meant. Oh, I'm glad he's not dead, aren't you? As equivocal as ever, I see. How kind of you to say so. So, was Quark all you found? The way you were talking made it sound like there was something else. Yeah, I'll explain that after Temyoji and Clover get back. But yeah, there definitely is something else. There's something I wanted to ask you about first, though. When you went through the green door, did you search two different rooms? Two? No, just the treatment center. I see. Then what was the other one? What do you mean, the other one? You know, where there's that intersection with three doors? Well, when Kay and I went there, two of the doors were unlocked. You guys unlocked the one that went to the treatment center when you went through the green door. But the other one... Who could have opened it? Don't look at me. I told you, we only opened the one that went to the treatment center. I wouldn't be surprised if which door opens is a function of which bracelets make it its way through, right? Different combinations of colors will lead to different um, doors opening. Although, was this the second door? It was the green door, right? So I think with the chromatic doors, yeah, with the chromatic doors, it was possible to have three different combinations. With the white doors, there was only one. Could it have been Zero Senior? I don't know. Hmm. Yeah, that is the question, isn't it? So, did you and Kay go through the other door? Yeah. What was in there? Nothing, really. It appeared to be some sort of room for servicing something. That doesn't make any sense. I wonder. I wouldn't be surprised, actually, if it was like Kay's suit. So, what the heck was whoever opened that door looking for? Actually, that's a really good point, Dio. We need to consider... Is somebody going through that door looking for something in particular? Do they know that there's something in that specific door that they need? Who knows? Temyoji and Clover are running rather late. Should we go and look for them? No, there's something I want to check first. It's never easy with you, is it? Well, let's get it over with. Oh, that's right! <laughs> that's right, the, the Luminol. Huh? This is the rec room. Dio and I came here earlier when we were looking for Quark. So why are we here? Was there something here you needed to see? I said nothing, and instead made my way over toward the cabinet. 
Inside was the luminol. I reached in and pulled it out, then headed to the light switch and flipped it. Just start spraying like crazy, Sigma. Don't even ask them to, you know, stick their hands out. They might get suspicious and, or they might get anxious and, you know, refuse. Just start spraying away, Sigma. <laughs> uh, the room went dark and I headed back to where the others were still standing. Oi, oi, nandayo. Whoa, whoa, what is it? You gonna start telling ghost stories or something? Why, you scared of ghosts? <laughs> you're kidding me, right? Then show me how brave you are. Stick out your bracelet. You too, Fi. Please. Our bracelets? Yeah. I want to see the underside of them. What do you mean by that? I mean the side on the bottom. The side that doesn't have the display on it. Come on, you're really gonna make me explain this? I know what you mean. What I'm asking is what the heck you think you're... Just do it. It's not hard. Should I also participate? No, you're fine, Kate. Wait, what? No, you absolutely have Kate participate. Your bracelet is a little different from ours. But I'll join in just to make it fair. There was a brief moment of hesitation before Dio and Fi stuck out their arms. I held mine out as well, wrist pointed upward. <laughs> just waiting. Watch it be like Sigma's. Watch Sigma's light up, and he'd just be like, What? <laughs> right? This is about the, the old woman. This okay? Yeah. Just hold it like that for a moment. As fast as I could, I pulled the luminol from my pocket and sprayed it across all three of our wrists. Cold! What the heck, man? Dio jerked his arm back with a shout. Don't see anything glowing. Fi's bracelet is clean. So is mine, of course. That leaves only Dio. Wait. What are you talking about? I'll explain in a minute. Just show me your bracelet. Is something wrong? Just show it to me. Come on, Dio, we don't have time for this. Why do I have to do what you tell me to? Because I'm trying to prove your innocence. Like heck you are. I don't know what you're looking for, but you're not going to find it on me. Then just show me your arm. No. You don't get to order me around. I have rights. As he spoke, Dio made a break for the exit. He didn't get far. I'm afraid I can't let you do that, Dio. Oh my goodness, we've totally got Dio cornered. <laughs> he spun around toward the other exit. Stop him! Right. Don't know what you're talking about, but okay. All three of us left at Dio. Oh man. <gasps> I knew it! His bracelet's glowing! Then that means... Let me go! Get off of me! Dio, you killed the old lady! No! You don't understand! This is all some kind of a mistake! What's going on here? I think it's about time you gave us the full story. As quickly as I could, I explained to Fi what Kay and I had noticed on the old woman's wrist. So the person with the bloody bracelet would have to be the person who killed her. Yeah, exactly. Even if they'd wiped it off, I figured the luminol would still react to the blood. It looks like I was right. So... In Dio's defense, very briefly, and very unlikely, but still, it is possible there are things other than blood that'll react with the Luminol that Dio could have interacted with, and that uh, potential defense, uh, defense that Dio could make. Something else to consider is whoever killed the woman and took the bracelet could have put the bracelet on Dio, and so the killer of the lady is not necessarily the person wearing the bracelet. Again, I think those possibilities are less probable than, you know, what we're dealing with right now, but those are still open in possibilities. We've got you, Dio. You might as well confess. Well? Ah, so there! 
Alright, fine. You caught me. I did it. I killed the old Baka and took her bracelet. Why? Are you zero? No. No, I was under orders. I was sent here to... to do... something. Huh? So if Dio's not zero, but was sent here with very specific orders to do something... To do what? To infiltrate the Nonary game? By some means? To do what? Who gave you this order? I'll die before I tell you. So your orders were more important than Alice and Luna's lives. Whoa, whoa, let's not get ahead of ourselves. I killed the old lady, but that's it. I don't know anything about what happened to Alice and Luna. That wasn't you? Tread carefully, Sigma. This man is not to be trusted. He has already shown he is willing to lie and kill. Come on, I'm telling the truth. You gotta believe me. Even if we do believe you, you're still a killer. You just haven't killed as many people. Exactly. He should be restrained somehow. If we leave him be, he may well kill again. But where would we put him? Is there a room we can lock or anything? <sighs> so, are we really gonna lock Dio in a treatment pod? Ah, uh, perhaps we could put him in one of the treatment pods. Once we've locked it, he should be able to... Should, he should be unable to escape. How would they... They would need to still use Dio to get through the chromatic doors, though, right? That's still a possibility that, you know, he would need to be removed for. Oh, yeah. Hey, wait! I'll be good, I promise. Yeah, I think you're onto something, Kay. Let's go with that. Come on, please! Hey, listen to me! We'll let you out when the white door is open. Someone's going to need your bracelet to open the secondary door. Don't screw with me, you guys. There's no way in heck I'm going in that thing. Let go. Let me go. Darn it. Told you Bakas to let me go. You can't do this. Stop. Please stop. Please no, you can't. Yikes. Even my dog is reacting to <laughs> the fact that Dio is locked in here now. Yikes. Alright, well, one second, guys. Dio is understandably very upset. I'm a little bit concerned if... I, I guess... The rest of the participants need to be open to the idea that Dio didn't necessarily kill Alice and Luna. So even though Dio is a killer, and they have restrained him now, they're still not necessarily in the clear. There's arguably a more dangerous killer at large still, and I'm, I just fear that the rest of the participants are going to rest easy now that Dio's been restrained, and they really can't afford to yet. Also, just like... <laughs> I don't know, the idea of being locked in something like that, yeah, it just gives me chills. I don't. I really don't like that. Not that I don't understand why they're why they're doing this. Uh, I wouldn't consider myself like a claustrophobic person. It's the idea of more of being locked in a particular place. But anyways, Dio's open this thing. Said open it, darn it. I don't think so. I guess part of it is like I mean they're gonna let Dio out at some point for the chromatic doors. Dio's going to have some time to think about what he wants to say when he has a chance to say it to everyone, right? And so I'm really curious to see what, how he's going to try to explain things. He said he'd rather die before, you know, people find out who's giving him his orders, so it's not like he can really use that to explain it away. What is his motivation for wanting to participate in the nonary game? He killed someone to do it. 
And even though that means might be a bad thing, his cause may be one that actually benefits the rest of the group. So I'm not... I'm not writing off Dio immediately, as much as I'd like to. Um, <laughs> but... But I really don't know what's the right move here. Anyway, Sigma says, I don't think so. You're gonna pay for this. When I get up here, I'm going to end you. Spoken like a killer. But also, evidence to say, you know, fighting fire with fire, right? So, I guess we figured out who the murderer was. And we found Quark. Check on him while you're here. Now all that's left to do is find Clover and Temyoji. Yeah. Why don't we head back to the warehouse and start from there? They may have already returned. Good point. Let's go. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. It is also worth noting, now that I think about it, Quark... Quark is asleep next to Dio. There's a very real chance that Quark wakes up, exits the treatment pod, and Dio manages to get Quark to let him free. That's a very real possibility. No Clover, no Temyoji? Come on! Huh. Looks like they aren't back yet. They're taking suspiciously long. Perhaps they went to look for us. Aw, oh, man. Now we've got to go look for them. How much time until the white doors open? 50 minutes. Still a decent time. Then I don't think we really need to hurry yet. Why don't we wait a little longer? For all we know, they're on their way back right now. K and I nodded. By the way, there was something I wanted to ask you guys about. Oh yeah? Yeah, Quark's bracelet. When we found him in the pod, he wasn't wearing it. Why? How should I know? Presumably, it had been taken off before we found him. So, we have no idea where it is. Pretty much. I see. That's not good. Without that bracelet, we won't be able to continue the game. What? We need three bracelets to open the secondary door. If we lose one... Oh no! We wouldn't be able to go through the secondary door. Yeah. Who would be pairing up with Quark? Quark's bracelet should be a red solo. That would mean he'd be with the Cyan pair, which is, I think, Temyoji and K? Who's the Cyan pair? Oh no, Clover and Temyoji. That's right, that's right. The two people who are missing. Quark's bracelet is gone and his two teammates have disappeared. What's going on? Does that mean Clover and Temyoji took the bracelet? Well, if they found Quark before you did, yeah, there's a good chance they did. Then why aren't they back yet? Perhaps they've already gone through the white door. What? No, that's not possible. The primary doors haven't even opened yet. Perhaps someone opened one of them. How? I don't know. But again, we do have this open-ended problem of people opening doors we don't expect them to be able to do. But it's happened before. Look, 
Remember the three doors on the other side of the green door? Someone made one of them open. Perhaps this is the same thing. But... But that's against the rules. Yes, I know. But if the person opening the door is a Zero Senior, do you really think the rules matter? Zero Senior controls the entire game. So are you saying Clover or Temyoji is Zero Senior? It's a possibility. It would explain why they still haven't shown up. Could they really have taken Quark's bracelet and gone through one of the white doors? If they did, we wouldn't we won't know where they went until the doors opened for the rest of us. And I'm wondering if they were to go early, what advantage would that give, right? The only advantage is they would have access to some item in the safe, in addition to the AB game cards, the star cards, with which they could play an AB game round in which nobody else would be able to participate, right? And if that were the case, everybody else would lose points, and Quark, or uh, not Quark, uh, Clover and Temyoji would have a guaranteed plus three if they betray Quark. But but that's kind of the case no matter what, unless they're racing against the clock for some reason. If they anticipate Quark to wake up within a certain amount of time, they want to take advantage of that before he does. But I, I don't see that happening with Temyoji. I don't know, though. So, so I would assume. Interesting. Very interesting dynamic right now, guys. This is still all just speculation, though. Maybe we should go look for them again. One of us can stay behind so that we don't miss them if they come back. Okay. I'll stay. Yeah, I mean, we have been working with Kay quite a bit so far. Sigma and I will go see if we can find them, then. Make sure you get back five minutes before the door opens, alright? Oh, and don't forget to bring Dio with you. Of course. Yeah, that's actually a good point. We don't want to forget Dio and then have to run back and then miss our chance to go through the chromatic door. But alright, so we're gonna go hunting for Clover and Temyoji. I don't know if we're actually going to find them, right? And if we find them, what state are we going to find them in? Because there's, you know, certainly no guarantee of their safety given everything going on. If Temyoji or Clover is the killer, it's very possible we see a killer here with a dead Clover, a dead Temyoji, and Quark's bracelet. So I'm pretty eager to see what happens. I am going to say, though, we'll see what that result is in the next episode. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. I definitely did. I'm glad we've made some concrete progress in answering a few of the mysteries this game holds, right? Dio killed the old woman. We don't know why. We know it was under somebody's direction. And that's about it. But it is progress. And it'll definitely impact, well, the rest of this timeline, as well as probably others. So I'm curious to see just what impact that will have. And I hope you guys are looking forward to finding K, or not finding K, finding Clover and Temyoji just as much as I am. But until the next episode, this has been Night Zero, and this mission is complete.